Welcome to lecture 19 of Biology 116 entitled Synapses and Sensory Receptors. In the previous lecture, we established a basic understanding of how neurons work, and that was grounded on the idea of action potentials. What we're going to do in this lecture is take that idea a little bit further and understand the root causes of action potentials. And that idea is going to be encompassed behind this term known as the synapse. So we'll start this first flowchart and video by entitling it synapse intro. So to begin, we're going to first understand what this term really means. Synapse is just another word for a junction. And a junction is simply a gap. And specifically, whenever you think of a gap, it's always between point A and point B. And the same idea holds true for the synapse. The synapse, what we're focusing on right now, is a neuron, the nervous system specifically. And within this area that's called the synapse, this junction, this gap, we're going to see that this will be a space between the synaptic terminal. So if you remember from the previous lecture, at the end of the axon, of a neuron, you have a synaptic terminal, so we can remind ourselves that that's just the end of the neuron, and also right in between that area there's going to be a space called the synapse, and the other side of that area will simply be another neuron. So you'll have another neuron um, right across the space, or it may also be an effector. And that could be like a muscle cell or a gland cell, etc. So you have this empty space, between one neuron's end, which is the synaptic terminal, and another neuron where it begins. That empty space that's in between them is called the synapse, and that's where we're going to have much of this lecture focus itself on, the functions associated with that. In order to understand those functions, what we need to lay out first are the types of synapses. So we'll do that over here. And this is going to be primarily focusing on two major types of synapses. The first one that we'll get out of the way is an electrical synapse. This is a simple one, this is an easy one to remember. The electrical synapse is usually going to be found in things like bones. So these are often referred to more broadly as uh, bone synapses. These are specifically and exclusively electrical in the way that they function. Now this function is very simple. In this synapse, in this junction that forms between, let's say, the neurons that are uh, innervating bones, what we're going to see here is an electrical current, thus the name electrical synapse. But specifically, this electrical current is going to flow from one neuron to another. From one neuron to another. And this is of course occurring at the bones because these are bone synapses. The one thing that these electrical synapses lack is the fact that they do not utilize something called neurotransmitters, and that's what we'll talk about in just a second. So they don't have neurotransmitters, then how do they send their messages? They use an electrical current, direct electrical current from one neuron to another within bones, and that's how an electrical synapse will work. It's a very quick and efficient route, but it's not very sort of uh, fancy or let's say elaborate as compared to the other type of synapse and the majority of synapses will follow the chemical synapse route. And this is something to take great note of because there's a lot of details associated with this type of synaptic signaling as we'll see later. A chemical synapse is shown in figure 48.6, uh, 48.16. And here what we're going to notice is the following. When you're looking at a chemical synapse, Anytime you're seeing this, you're going to be first noticing something called the synaptic cleft. So let's write this down, the synaptic cleft. Here, this is basically a more uh, advanced way of stating the junction that we mentioned here, but this synaptic cleft is a specific junction found in between chemical synapses, okay? Something that utilizes a chemical synapse. So we'll put this into words like the following. The synaptic, the synaptic cleft will be a gap, a junction, which separates two main things that are very important in this lecture. The presynaptic neuron, okay, the presynaptic neuron from, so there's going to be a gap in between the presynaptic neuron um, and also, let's say, the postsynaptic cell. So presynaptic neurons from postsynaptic cells. So take a look here. What we have is a presynaptic neuron, something that's before the synapse. Then you will have the synaptic cleft. And after the synaptic 
cleft, you get the appropriately named postsynaptic cell. So that's our orientation right now. This is about 20 nanometers in space. It's a very tiny space, and this sort of average space in between the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic cell, or the synaptic terminal and the other neuron or effector, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be a big indicator of how this works. So let's take a look at sort of a simple uh, pathway that occurs for neuro neurotransmitters to work in a chemical fashion. Okay? So there were no neurotransmitters in electrical synapses. Let's see what happens in chemical synapses. They really do utilize neurotransmitters um, very much so. So what we're going to notice here is that there will be, of course, a presynaptic neuron. So this is just extending our knowledge of what we've already just broadly established above. The presynaptic neuron is the one that comes right before the synaptic cleft, and it's also prior to the postsynaptic cell. What's going to happen here is the following. The presynaptic neuron will first initially, let's say on the side over here, it synthesizes neurotransmitters. Okay? It has this function and capability of making neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters for right now, which I've abbrevi abbreviated as NT, think of them as just chemical messages for right now. Thus, this is going to be a part of a chemical synapse. We'll talk about them a little bit more later. But for right now, just know that they're made at the presynaptic neuron, and also upon their synthesis, they will be packaged. They'll be packaged into what are known as synaptic vesicles. Vesicles of the synapse, as you'll see in just a second. So synaptic vesicles is the storage structure that holds these synthesized neurotransmitters um, and they will eventually be released into the synapse. So let's see the path that takes us to the synapse and then eventually to the postsynaptic cell. So now we have these neurotransmitters within these synaptic vesicles. What we're going to notice is that at the presynaptic neuron, step one is basically an action potential. An action potential is a neural impulse. It's a message, okay? And if that message arrives, it's specifically going to be all the way at the synaptic terminal. So that is going to be the start of this chemical synapse message, okay? Remember how we said that the junction is between the synaptic terminal and the neuron, uh, and then in between another neuron and an effector. So what we're going to see here is that the action potential will come to the synaptic terminal and cause an event to occur here. This is going to be the first place where something happens. What happens when an action potential arrives is what you would expect, depolarization. So the depolarization of the membrane occurs specifically. Depolarizes plasma membrane at the synaptic terminal. So we're talking about neuron A basically, okay? Neuron A at its synaptic terminal, that membrane becomes depolarized, okay? And that's going to cause an effect to the synaptic terminal that is found on its end portion, uh, on its synaptic area. That neuron, upon the depolarization, will have its voltage-gated channels open. Now, why do these channels open? Well, that's because a depolarization event happened right above. And depolarization is when you make something, what, less negative, and that's going to cause the voltage-gated channels to open. That's going to then cause the following effect. That will cause the calcium ions, there are calcium ions also in this area, that are going to diffuse into the terminal, okay? Diffuse into the synaptic terminal. Now, don't worry about the fact that these are calcium ions. Just know that for right now, we basically have positive ions diffuse into the terminal. Specifically, the ones here are calcium ions. Now, the reason why it's calcium is because when you have an increase in calcium ion concentration, an increase in Ca2 plus concentration, this directly causes an effect on these synaptic vesicles. It causes them, the synaptic vesicles that we made prior, initially over here, it causes those vesicles to fuse, okay? It causes the vesicles to fuse with the terminal membrane. So now you're going to have this fusion event between the synaptic vesicle that was made at the presynaptic neuron. It's going to fuse with that terminal membrane that's being depolarized because of this action potential that came. And you're going to have this event that's going to allow the neurotransmitter to basically envelop itself into this terminal membrane. And when it does that, it releases its contents. And what's within the synaptic vesicles? Of course, that's going to be, and we'll extend this right over here, the next step. What's within those vesicles are the neurotransmitters. And those neurotransmitters will be released 
but the area that they're released is this right here, the synaptic cleft, because that's that empty area between the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic cell. So now they're released into that empty area. Once they're released there, the neurotransmitters will eventually reach their destination, their target. Their target will be reached via diffusion. They'll diffuse across this synaptic cleft, so they diffuse across. And once they've diffused across, they also will bind. Diffuse across plus bind to specific receptors. Now, where do you think those receptors are going to be? Those receptors will be right at the postsynaptic membrane, okay? To specific receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, because that was our goal, to send a message somehow to the postsynaptic cell. And that's what we do here. We have this neurotransmitter that's within the synaptic vesicle originally. It is then going to fuse with the plasma membrane of the terminal membrane. That's going to release the contents of the neurotransmitter, of that vesicle, I should say, and the neurotransmitter will be released then. Once that neurotransmitter is released, it's got to go somewhere. And the only place it can go, 20 nanometers a little bit below, is the postsynaptic cell. And the part of the postsynaptic cell that it specifically binds to as a chemical message, as a part of this chemical synapse, is the specific receptor for it on the postsynaptic membrane. That's a basic overview and look at how a synapse works. We'll get into more details now of the specific events associated with the postsynaptic results of this message being released.